Stoke Space is a brand new rocket company potentially taking the spaceflight industry by storm. They are building a fully and rapidly reusable orbital class rocket in a way that nobody has ever seen before. So today I will tell you all you need to know about Stoke Space and their Nova rocket and the absolutely genius systems powering it. I've been wanting to make a video on Stoke Space for quite some time now as it is by far my favorite up and coming rocket company. So yeah, let's dive right in. Stoke Space was founded in 2020 by two former Blue Origin employees, Andy Lapsa and Tom Feldman, with the goal of building a 100% reusable rocket. Reusable rockets lower the cost of spaceflight, enabling more frequent launches and making space more accessible for everyone. Now the rocket that they are building is called Nova. It is currently under development in Washington state and it is expected to make its debut in 2026. It consists of two stages and will be able to carry up to 5 tons into low earth orbit. It was rumored to be about 4 meters in diameter and 30.5 meters tall, but a recent article by the Seattle Times features some updated NOVA information, putting it at 38 meters or 124 feet tall. Its first stage will use liquid oxygen and liquid methane as its propellants, and its second stage will run on liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. When it launches, seven full flow stage combustion cycle engines power it into space. And after stage one separation, the first stage returns to the launch site and lands. It is then prepared for reuse, not too dissimilar to rockets like Falcon 9. But the second stage is where this rocket gets really interesting. When Stoke Space was founded, the company started developing the second stage of their Nova rocket first, because first stage reusability was already figured out by companies like SpaceX. In 2022, their second stage prototypes already had over 20 static fires under their belt and in September 2023 they performed their first ever flight, a 10 meter hop test with their Hopper 2 vehicle. The second stage is driven by a single turbo pump assembly that powers 30 separate thrust chambers, which surround the heat shield that is used for re-entry. The engine uses an expander cycle, where usually cryogenic propellant, in this case liquid hydrogen, flows around the thrust chambers and cools them down. Now for Nova, not only does the propellant flow past the chambers, but during re-entry the hydrogen also runs past the heat shield, to also keep it cool. As this hydrogen absorbs heat, it warms up and turns into a gas. Now most of this hot hydrogen gas is sent into the combustion chambers to generate thrust, but a very small amount of this hydrogen gets sent to power the turbine that drives the engine's turbo pumps, which in turn pump in more fuel and oxidizer. This is a genius way of keeping the heat shield and engines cool, while powering the engines at the same time. Originally SpaceX wanted to use active cooling for Starship's heat shield, where cryogenic liquid methane would be released through tiny pores in the heat shield's hottest areas during re-entry. They eventually decided not to implement this system due to concerns over mass and extra plumbing, which could negatively impact performance, and the ceramic tiles that they are using now work just as well while being more lightweight at the same time. Now the reason Stoke Space is still using this actively cooled heat shield is because, once again, it is a lot more integrated because it also powers the engines. Nova's smaller heat shield, relative to the overall size of the vehicle, also makes it more feasible to use active cooling without compromising performance as much. In fact, when Nova's second stage returns from orbit, its actively cooled heat shield would have protected the vehicle so well that it can be reflown pretty much immediately without any refurbishment. And real quick, if you've learned something so far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel for more content like this, it would mean the world to me. Alright, let's continue. The way the second stage of Nova is controlled is also pretty interesting. Pretty much all rockets, including the first stage of Nova, use thrust vectoring to orient themselves, where an engine tilts in a specific direction to change the angle of thrust. But because Nova's second stage has 30 individually controlled thrust chambers, it uses a thrust differential steering method, allowing precise control by individually adjusting the throttle of each of the 30 engines. It also has a more common, but equally as interesting way of controlling itself during re-entry. The eagle-eyed among you may have noticed that the heat shield is slightly skewed and not perfectly symmetrical. During re-entry, this design creates an asymmetrical aerodynamic force, and by rolling the capsule there is one area of the heat shield that generates more force than the rest. For example, if the capsule rolls in a way so the heat shield extends more on the left side, it will produce a force pushing the vehicle to the left. This skewed heat shield and rolling maneuver provides very precise control over the capsule's re-entry path. 
This is actually a pretty common way of controlling re-entry capsules, but I thought it was worth mentioning. Like I said before, its first stage is powered by seven full flow stage combustion cycle rocket engines. They started development of their first stage engine in November 2022, and only 18 months later, on June 5th, 2024, they fired their first full flow engine. This is really impressive, considering that full flow stage combustion has only been done twice before, and it is about as complicated as it gets when it comes to rocket propulsion. A full flow of each propellant, so liquid methane as fuel and liquid oxygen as oxidizer, flow through their own separate pre-burners, where they partially burn with a small amount of the opposite propellant. For example, in the fuel turbo pump assembly, nearly all of the fuel goes into the fuel pre-burner, along with a small amount of oxidizer to allow for combustion. This combustion produces a fuel-rich exhaust that powers the fuel turbine, which in turn drives the fuel turbo pump. Similarly, in the oxidizer turbo pump assembly, the oxidizer mixes with a small amount of fuel, creating an oxygen-rich exhaust that powers the oxidizer turbine and turbo pump. After powering the turbo pumps, the fuel-rich and oxygen-rich exhaust continue into the main combustion chamber where they fully combust to produce thrust. So why does Stoke Space use full flow stage combustion? Well, because both the fuel and oxidizer enter the combustion chamber as gases, there is a gas-gas interaction inside the combustion chamber, which is more efficient than a liquid-liquid or liquid-gas interaction. Full flow stage combustion also allows for a higher mass flow through the turbine compared to other cycles, which means an increase in turbo pump power and chamber pressure. And lastly, because of the big difference in fuel to oxidizer ratios in the pre-burners, the pre-burner exhaust temperature is lower than on other engines. This cooler exhaust reduces stress on the turbine blades, making them more reusable and allowing them to be reused more often before requiring refurbishment. As of right now, Nova is still in development and will be for the coming years. Stokespace has a testing facility near Moses Lake, Washington, where they test stuff like engines and flight systems, located about 3 hours from their main manufacturing facility in Kent. They have been designated Historic Launch Complex 14 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, which is the same pad where John Glenn was launched to become the first American in orbit, and they have recently started transforming the pad to be compatible with Nova. If you want to see more videos like this, then please consider subscribing to the channel, and if you want to provide feedback on these videos and help work on them, then maybe become a channel member. There are a bunch of cool perks like 24 hour early access to all my videos, exclusive status updates and early access to all my video scripts, flying on all my Kerbal Space Program missions, a shout out in every single video and of course my eternal gratitude. So yeah, that was the video. I really hope you learned something new and now understand why Stokespace is a force to be reckoned with. I hope to see you all in the next video.